Okay, thank you. Thank you for making me cry. He did brush away some tears way into the interview. Such are the emotions that well up in the executive director of Connected Development, Hamzat Lawal, each time he broaches the subject of corruption and its devastating effect, particularly on society's vulnerable persons. At 34, Hamzat is one of the youngest but most prominent anti-corruption activists in Nigeria. He remains passionate about his fight against graft and his pet project, Follow the Money, has exposed him to temptation from individuals keen on concealing their nefarious acts. I've been bribed before. The first time I was bribed was in 2014 with 100 million naira when I was running the 9.2 billion naira clean cook stove initiative. I was given 100 million naira cash not transfer, not check, but the cash in Ghana must go, just for me to keep quiet and look the other way. In 2019, I was bribed with $2 million, just to keep quiet about an oil and gas FPSO project that was ravaged with corruption. And I, of course, the two bribes, I turned them down, because the world have taught me that for you to be successful is ideas. Ideas actually rule the world. Not material things, not wealth, but ideas. But ideas that brings value to your life and the life of the people around your community. And how are you touching lives? How are you impacting people? I know billionaires that they don't give charity. But I know pe poor people who with even their little income, they still take a percentage and use it for charity. Listening to Hamzat's story readily elicits an inquiry into what has created the staunch anti-corruption crusader he has turned out to be. He grew up mainly in the Nigerian capital, Abuja, but he recalls that though he is a dedicated Muslim, he went to schools that were largely Catholic. They never interfered with his Islamic beliefs. In Abuja, I was enrolled in the Catholic Nazarene Primary School. At that time, um, no one really talked about or talked much about what religion or what ethnicity or what background you belong to. So my parents enrolled me to the Catholic school. And, and then I was shaped as a young child about, you know, more. So the Catholic school taught me more about being a good person. Hamzat humbly submits that his father was a driver with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. By this definition, the man clearly wasn't a part of elite society in the strict sense of the phrase. But he practicalized getting his children to appreciate very early in life the injunctions of the Holy Quran by discouraging them from showing acts of greed. Back in primary school, I remember one fateful day my brother brought home a toy. And according to him, it was a toy that he collected from his friend, who they were playmates. But my parents are always conscious about what we bring home and ensuring that what they're able to afford for us is what we appreciate and utilize. And I remember my father having a conversation with my brother that they sitting him down and explaining to him that he does not need or have to collect his friend's toy to bring home to play with. And if he, my dad cannot afford for him that toy, he should do with what um, we as a family can afford. And he explained to us that contentment in life is really important. Hamzat was raised in the ways of ennobling religious teachings. In his adult life, he cannot for one minute imagine himself departing from those injunctions. He actually has an easy assessment of life on earth. And I tell people out there that money, material, would never make you happy. Some persons who know Hamzat Lawal speak about him eloquently. Hamzi is so selfless. He's somebody who would want you to be at your best all the time. And it's another thing working with somebody and then the person is always reviewing your performance. That's who Hamzi is. Hamzi wants you to strive for perfection. I'll point to the fact that, you know, Hamzi is too nice, you know, um, because, I mean, it's crazy how you would want to um, share your hard work 
you know, with other people, and you're saying to them, hey, I don't want you to um, work under me forever, go ahead and start up your organization, and we're committing to give you the technical support it requires, you know, to be able to hold your own government to account. Life will continue to drop its chimes, and as each day dawns, this rather enigmatic young anti-corruption crusader will keep sharing with his equally young staff why it is necessary never to allow greed or graft to take over society. Thanks to, so to speak, the faith clinic that created a path for him to walk through life.